Hi everyone. Today I have a couple of maintenance things that I have to do for my grow spaces and I figure it's a good opportunity to share with you about my experiences with growing orchids under LED strip lights. I have this setup for about three months now since last August and my take on it is that it's okay. Uh, more on that later but this was a cheap and dirty way to supplement light for my orchids. I will say that it might not be the best solution in the world, but if you're working with a tight, confined space, this might be an option. Of course, there are a number of commercially available products out there. Um, some are LED and some are fluorescent. But because I like to experiment, uh, this became one of my weekend projects. Before I go through the details, uh, here's a little disclaimer. In this video, I am showing you what I did. I am not necessarily making any official recommendation because you need to assess the risk for this project um, as there are electrical aspects of this project. Furthermore, it may not be a solution for you because your growing conditions may be different and your goals may be different than mine. What I wanted to do was to hold my plants over the winter indoors and as the weather permits, bring them back outside. So these are not my permanent grow spaces. I am using shelving units to house my orchids because when the plants go outside, the shelves will be used to store various household things. I didn't want to have an area specifically dedicated for growing orchids because I simply do not have the space. Okay, so with that out of the way, let me show you the materials and equipments I used. Here are the LED strips. LED strips come in two types um, with respect to the width. On the top here, there is the 10 millimeters, and then on the one on the bottom is the 8 millimeters. Within these two types, there are several different options as far as the size of the LED chips. I've chosen to use the biggest one available just to maximize the amount of light it can produce. So the big one on top is the 5630 and the smaller one on the bottom is the 3528. Additionally, you can also choose to buy the strips with a waterproof coating which can be used uh, for outdoor applications. But for this purpose, um, it's not really necessary and it was a little hassle removing the, the waterproof coating in order to connect them together to other parts. Any series of LED strips will require a connection to a power source at one end. Sometimes at the end of the LED strip has a black and red wire like it is here. I use a uh, power adapter that looks like this. It's called a female DC power connector adapter, I think. And to connect it, you just insert the correct um, wire into the respective holes and then just tighten it with the screw. If the strip is bare like it is on the bottom here, you can use a different type of power adapter that looks like this. To use it, you just uh, open the latch here and then slide in the strip and then just close the latch. Just make sure that the positive and the negative poles are in the correct orientation. In most cases, I found that the power adapter is already included in the LED strips that you buy. Other adapters that I used allowed me to connect one LED strips to another. This particular one allows me to run the strips parallel to each other. The last part is the power supply used to light the LED strips. You should make sure that the power supply provides enough electricity for your strips. Strips are rated by wattage, usually per unit of length. Power supplies are sold based on voltage and amp. If you multiply voltage and amp, uh, you'll get a rated watts that the power supply can produce. It is recommended that your power supply should be able to produce at least 20% above what your LED needs uh, will be for any given length. I chose the largest one so that I don't have to do all of the calculations. I went with a 12 volt 10 amp, uh, that's about 120 watts um, power supply, uh, which would be sufficient for all my needs. 
once you have everything in place and connected, you just plug in to the DC power supply and light up your LED strips. Even though the strips had adhesives on the back, I like to run hot glue along the sides of the strips to make sure it adhered to the shelves. One final step that I like to do is to solder all the connections together to make sure that there is a good um, conduction. If you choose not to do this step, there is a risk that parts of the strips that were connected using connectors may get dimmer or sections will become unlit. I have encountered this problem very often. I found that soldering is a whole skill in itself. It was very difficult to get melted solder to go where you needed to go. I'll refer you to YouTube for many videos on good soldering techniques. Alright, so my take on this project is that it's alright, especially as a temporary thing. I don't have a light meter so I can't really say that I am providing sufficient light, although I'm sort of gauging the light needs by cues that my plants produce. For example, this is my Dendrobium aggregatum or Lindleyi. This orchid requires very high light and it produces anthocyanin, which is this red purplish pigment when it receives its, um, sufficient light. As you can see here, there is quite a bit of pigmentation, so I would say that I've met my goal for this project. Looking back, it's definitely a lot of work. Uh, the soldering was probably the worst thing about this project. You just have to develop good soldering techniques. With that, I'm going to conclude this video. I hope you find it useful, and if there are any questions or comments, please put them down below. I am not an expert on anything mentioned here, but I'll do my best to respond to them. Also, if you have uh, better techniques for any of the parts in this project, um, I would appreciate if you share it with me in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!